Hello everyone, my name is Julia Winkler from the University of Würzburg and on behalf of myself and my co-author Markus Appel, I would like to present this study in which we examined if individual differences in the way people cope with anxiety and stress can predict preferences of fictional versus non-fictional approaches to climate change issues. Climate change is one of the most pressing issues of our time, permeates public discourse, and has also found its way into literature, movies, and TV shows. There is a growing body of fictional stories that imagine life in a world altered by anthropogenic climate change, which has uh, been termed climate fiction or cli-fi. At the same time, surveys show a decline of engagement with news about climate change, and research finds that people avoid climate change information to avoid negative emotions. Um, because people, uh, people deal differently with stress and anxiety and therefore one may ask whether individual differences in coping styles can explain whether people seek out or avoid climate change related information and whether a climate fiction might be a preferred approach to engage with climate change for some people. For this study, we draw on the model of coping modes, which defines two modes of coping with stress and threatening situations. Cognitive avoidance refers to strategies that direct attention away from the stressor and arises if emotional arousal in response to a threat is perceived as non-manageable, whereas vigilance describes an orientation towards the threatening information and is motivated by the desire to reduce a sense of uncertainty. Although these constructs can be used to describe behavior and attention processes in specific situations, they are understood as traits in this model, meaning a person's individual disposition for cognitive avoidance and vigilance. These dimensions are further understood as independent, um, such that a person can be both high or low on both vigilance and avoidance simultaneously. Some scholars in aesthetic theory propose that art and cultural artifacts create an aesthetic distance, as a consequence of which audiences can experience them with a sense of emotional detachment and high engagement at the same time. Some empirical research has demonstrated that contextualizing objects as art changes how they, they are experienced emotionally and um, fosters a positive reappraisal of negative emotions in particular. This can be applied to fiction as well. So fictional narratives offer a compelling form of learning about real world issues. And because they are fiction, they enable experiencing emotionally extreme scenarios at an aesthetic distance and therefore um, might provide a way to approach issues that might otherwise be experienced as too threatening or too emotionally arousing in a more safe and controlled manner. This line of thought from aesthetic theory can be connected with coping theory um, because the proposed underlying mechanism for a cognitive, a cognitive avoidance is a fear of anxiety and a lack of resources to cope with emotional arousal. Fiction might be a preferred approach to threatening issues such as climate change for individuals who are high in cognitive avoidance. So in this study, we explored the question how coping dispositions might affect preferences for fictional and non-fictional books about climate change. We hypothesize that higher cognitive avoidance will predict a higher preference of fiction over non-fiction, whereas higher dispositions for vigilance will predict a higher preference of non-fiction relative to fiction. To test our hypotheses, we conducted an online experiment in which participants rated different fictional and non-fictional flap texts of climate change related books. We used Prolific to recruit a gender balanced sample among the German speaking population living in Germany. And we ended up with a sample of 506 participants for our data analysis. We measured coping dispositions with the Mind's Coping Inventory, which consists of eight scenarios of threatening situations. Some of these are scenarios that, that are potentially ego-threatening, such as making a speech to a group of people or a job interview, 
And other scenarios are physical threats, like going to the dentist with a toothache. And for each scenario, participants are given a list of 10 coping strategies, um, half of which are vigilant and the other half uh, are avoidant, and then are asked to indicate whether these would describe typical behaviors or thoughts that they would have in this situation. Our stimulus material consisted of 10 book flap texts, of which five were from fiction books and five from non-fiction books on various climate change issues like climate migration, melting ice, extinction of species, and so on. All stimuli were presented to all participants in random order and rated for interest on a single item. We tested our hypotheses using multi-level modeling due to the within-subjects design of our study with continuous moderators. We were basically interested in how within-subjects preferences of fictional versus non-fictional climate liter literature, which are level one variables, depend on differences between subjects in cognitive avoidance and vigilance, which are level two variables. So we are looking at cross-level interactions in this model. Our independent variable was effect coded such that um, fictional books have a positive value and the level two variables were grand mean centered so that zero represents the sample mean. We allowed for random slopes and random intercepts for subjects, meaning that our model considered that interest in the books per se and within preferences between fiction and non-fiction might vary randomly between subjects. Now looking at the results of our model, we can see a table here with all the main effects and interactions, and we are obviously interested in the uh, interaction effects. And we can see that there is indeed a significant cross-level interaction between condition and avoidance, but not between condition and vigilance. When we look at the interaction plot for the uh, condition and avoidance, we see that um, lower cognitive avoidance predicts a higher interest in climate literature overall, but uh, especially for nonfiction, which is here uh, signified by the red line. Um, so the more cognitively avoidant individuals are, the smaller this preference for nonfiction over fiction becomes, and the less they are interested in climate literature altogether. However, for vigilance, we do not observe a significant interaction with condition. We can only see a main effect here in the plot where higher vigilance predicts lower interest in climate literature, which seems a bit counterintuitive. And um, because the vigilance and cognitive avoidance dimensions um, each consists of an ego threat and physical threat subscale, we conducted a follow-up analysis to see if a more detailed analysis can help us make sense of these results. So here we can see the results of an alternative model in which we entered the um, ego threat and physical threat subscales of each coping dimension separately. And um, here we can see now that both interaction terms of the physical and ego threat subscale of vigilance are significant, um, but are uh, actually oppose each other. So one is positive and one is negative, and uh, were therefore probably masked in the previous model. So now again, when we look at the plots of the interactions, we can see first uh, looking at the interaction of condition and cognitive avoidance, um, we can see that the cross-level interaction of cognitive avoidance and the condition is exclusively explained by the physical threat subscale, which is displayed on the right. When we look at the interaction plot for vigilance in response to ego threats um, with condition, we can see that there is a significant preference of non-fiction over fiction for high vigilance, but no preference for low vigilance. So the more vigilant a person is, 
the more their interest in nonfiction increases, but their interest in fiction, which is blue here, decreases. However, um, the picture is a bit different for vigilance in response to physical threats. Here, um, we can see that interest in both fiction and um, nonfiction decreases with higher vigilance. And the preference for nonfiction over fiction is higher, the lower people's disposition for vigilance is. So to sum up, we found some evidence in favor of our proposed hypotheses, although the patterns were somewhat complex. We propose that higher cognitive avoidance will lead to higher preference of fiction relative to nonfiction, or put differently, that high cognitive avoiders will avoid fiction less than nonfiction. The overall direction of the interaction effect was in support of this prediction, but it wasn't driven by a higher interest in fiction compared to nonfiction for high, higher avoidance. It rather looked like the lower a person's disposition for avoidance, the more they preferred nonfiction over fiction. But this preference decreased with higher cognitive avoidance, meaning that only low avoiders preferred nonfiction over fiction, but not high avoiders. For vigilance, we found some counteracting interaction effects of the ego threat and physical threat vigilance subscales. So a higher preference of nonfiction over fiction was predicted by higher ego threat vigilance, but surprisingly by lower physical threat vigilance. A possible explanation here might be related to the type of medium that we examined in the study and the uses uh, people see in nonfiction books. So nonfiction books often provide in-depth information in, in an easily digestible manner for people without a science background or they might offer perspectives about what can be done to mitigate and adapt to climate change effects. They are not so much a medium for the latest news. So there might simply be different information needs associated with high physical threat vigilance compared to ego threat vigilance. So for people who are highly vigilant uh, with regard to the physical threats posed by climate change, it might be more relevant to stay on top of new developments and monitor the latest information related to climate change. So they might find nonfiction books less of a useful source for their needs overall, but may nevertheless be highly interested in climate change news. So the patterns might look different for uh, different types of stimuli. Of course, some limitations need mentioning. We limited our stimulus set to books in the study for the sake of comparability. However, in relation to my previous point, different types of media are used for different kinds of purposes. And in addition, the effects in the study were rather small. So in order to draw conclusions on the potential aesthetic distancing effect of fiction, it is important for future studies to test these hypotheses across various types of media, such as movies, TV shows, documentaries, podcasts, uh, and news reports, and ideally also using a larger set of stimuli. And furthermore, owe to the within design of the study, the flap text used in the fiction and non-fiction conditions varied in a lot of other aspects than fictionality, which may have had an influence on participants' interest. For example, non-fiction books often have a lower degree of narrativity than the fiction books. So future studies should try and isolate the influence of fictionality to investigate the aesthetic dis distancing effect of fiction. Finally, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions or comments, I'm happy to discuss them with you in person at the conference or for the virtual attendees, just send me an email.